guys this is the sample question we are going to use for um, the titration titrometric analysis for the y 2025 so we can see the question written here so a is a solution containing 0 0.1 mole per dm cube of hcl so then b is a solution containing nahco3 so here the concentration of b is eden then put A into the burette and titrate against 20 or 25 centimeter cube of B using methyl orange indicator. Then after that, in the next slide of the video, you're going to see a lot of procedures you need to follow. And at the same time, the reason why methyl orange is the best indicator and how you could uh, arrange your apparatus to do the experiment. So now we are told to repeat the procedure for two more consistent values of A. Um, then we tabulate the table, I mean we tabulate the reading, then calculate the average volume of A used, then from your results you have to make these calculations. So which means after everything, we calculate the concentration of B in mole per dm cube, concentration of B in gram per dm cube, concentration of A in gram per dm cube, and then I mean the volume of CO2 uh, gas produce at STP. So you can take a look at the chemical equation here. So the chemical equation shows you have uh, what's it called here? The CO2 here. I mean CO2 that's the product side. So you have the HCl here, the NaHCO3, NaCl. H2O and then CO2. So now in this case now what we just have to do is uh, we need to know the number of moles. So if you look at it very well the equation is balanced. So the number of moles in this equation shows that HCl is one mole, that's Na is one mole, then Nb is also one mole. So we can proceed to the next slide of the video where you see the apparatus and then after that you see the calculations that comes after it okay let's move on guys following the instruction as given in the sample question we are going to refill this burette using our funnel there so we're going to refill the burette up to the zero centimeter mark point here and then we prepare the base of 25 into a conical flask and you see the color of the metal orange indicator in the basic medium so then we have to titrate the acid against it until the color changes and then we stop and check the volume here and record it so we're going to do that for like three times i'm going to show you how to tabulate the table right you can always see that on our channel from our previous videos so we are going to do that and then we go about to do the calculations as stated in the question you have seen before uh, this slide of the video. So now the uh, instruction asks us to just what we need to do here is just to take our three concordance title value. So we take the first titration, we do the second one, or third one. So what I just want to explain to you guys here is uh, the procedures that I have to do with uh, using of this uh, apparatus. So then you rinse this with the solution is meant to contain. You have to rinse this. That is part of the procedure or uh, precautions you need to take. You need to uh, rinse the burette with the solution is meant to contain, rinse the conical flask with water, and rinse the pipette which the solution is meant to contain. And at the same time, uh, when filling the burette or after filling the burette before you start titration, you have to remove the funnel so that you won't keep titrating while the funnel tops it up for you. So that is it. So. Uh, other precautions are is that when you completely discharge the content of this, you don't blow to uh, remove them all because it is designed to discharge exactly the volume it's supposed to be. So, methyl orange indicator is the best type of indicator used for this experiment because the acid is a strong acid and the base is a weak base. So, in order to get the accurate value for uh, the tighter value, so we make use of the methyl orange indicator. So we are going to fill this now and do at least one in your presence. So then we do other three so that we can we do other three behind the video and then we do calculations so you can see what the table looks like and how the calculations are done. Okay, let's move on. And then 
we adjust the volume of this back to zero. So at the end of the first titration, this is what we got. So this is actually a, a, uh, the color changes to something pink. So this is what we got. So that's the end point. So we mark our first reading to be uh, 23.5. 23.5 was where the burette stop reading. So we're going to take three, two other readings and make the table. So you see the table in the next slide of the video and then we go over to do the calculation. So now the calculation part has been done. So look at the table here. So from the title value we got which is 23.5. We did the second and we got a 23.6 and the third one was a 23.5. Those are the asterisk ones they are the volume of a used in the three titrations so but one thing is before you draw your table like this you just have to write the volume of pipette used which is 25 and the type of indicator used then you now have the three tables so the first one started with zero so and then we got 23.5 so we can still see more of 23.5 so we have to continue from there and we got 47 point uh, 47 point okay let's leave that 47.10 then when you subtract 23.5 here from 47.10 you would get the asterisk 23.6 then if you look at the breadth which is just 50 if you deduct 47.10 from 50 what will be left is uh going to be less very small so we have to refill the burette back to zero and we got 23.50 so the question also asks us to calculate the average volume of a used and that is done by adding these three asterisk then divided by three so and then we have the equation of the reaction here which you have seen from the original question so now let us go ahead to do the calculations the first one is to calculate the concentration of b in mole per dm cube so every other information given to us include concentration of A, volume of A, the volume of B, number of moles of A and B. So using this formula, CA times VA over CB times VB all over equals a NA over NB. You have to make CB the subject of the formula since you are looking for the concentration of the base in mole per dm cube. So substituting other values as it is here, we got 0.094 then what is the equivalent mass concentration of 0.094 that gives us cb equals the mass concentration over molar mass so which means mass concentration would be the molar concentration cb times molar mass so you have to make anyone you are looking for the subject of the formula like this that will make you get your mark accurately so then eventually we got that mass to be 7.90 so then the third question requested that we find the concentration of acid in mole in gram per dm cube don't forget the 0.1 which is concentration of acid ca was given in the question so which means uh, we just have to substitute it here to find the mass concentration of a provided we know the molar mass so then the molar mass the molar concentration rather is going to be the mole i mean the mass concentration will be molar concentration times the molar mass which is 36.5 you know that is hcl so that is how we got that so then we have the next one which is the question that I requested that we find the volume of co2 produced in the process so now this is the analysis to find the volume of CO2 produced. So you have the molar volume of, of gases at STP is 22.4. So now the number of moles of B that produces CO2 according to it, since the concentration of B is 0.094, then you have to calculate the volume of B in dm cube. That is why you see me dividing it by 1000 here. So then thereafter, this is the number of moles of 
CB that is used in that reaction. So now, from the equation, you know, one mole of CO2 requires one mole of B. Let's go back to the equation to check that. So, one mole of B here produces one mole of CO2 here. So then, since that is it, so which means 0.0235 moles of CB, which has been calculated here, we equivalently produce 0.0235 moles of CO2. So then we take that into the formula, which says volume of CO2 produced equals the number of moles of CO2 times the molar volume. So we got 0.053 dm3 for the volume of CO2 produced. This is just a header for all the possible questions you might come across in your exam. So this is not the exam question and no one knows what the examiner will bring for you guys so just to make you get prepared for your exam this video should not be used for any form of malpractice so just make a good use of it in practice and in preparation for your examination thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel it's free thank you